Well, it's kind of like when you start with one song and you have like two songs, then like maybe three songs, then you start to see the whole picture, more or less. And I think that the challenge is nowadays that people are so ADD. They come, you know, their attention span is so short that it's interesting to um, try to um, to explain everything that the band is within three and a half minutes. You know, like, a, because people don't, the people listen to so much music, they download so much stuff, they don't like, l not a lot of people listen to albums anymore. But then if you listen to ACDC's Back in Black, that's all singles. If you listen to good, like, Kiss albums, they're all singles. And uh, so, so uh, I think um, I think it's a positive thing if there's a lot of stuff that could be played on the radio or whatever. And, you know, obviously we want to want the band to be as successful as possible, but on our own terms. We want to write our own songs and and uh, you know, everybody. It, it, there's a lot of improvisation going on, and you never know how the album's going to be until it's finished. So, at least in our case, there's a lot of last-minute changes that might all of a sudden change the mood of a song. Or like the um, there's that track in the arms of rain, with that really, the popcorn sound, ba -ba 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 -ba, which is like directly f like straight from popcorn. Not a sample though, but uh, it's got that U2 guitar thing happening. And we did that like the very last day of recording. We, we, it was just like one of them things that you're like, you're listening to all the songs, and then you feel that something is missing, and you just keep on adding that stuff, and then <coughs> or taking stuff out, and then all of a sudden that new little thing can be so cool or so important that you that you want to do that kind of a thing on the other songs as well. So it's like everything keeps on changing all the time, which which makes music or making music interesting, I think. Yeah, we did all the uh, all the demoing in Helsinki. We did one like proper demo with with Healy, the Finnish guy who who uh, produced some of our stuff and uh, and then uh, uh, then the rest of the stuff we just did uh, at the rehearsal place we have. Just shitty sounding demos, but just with the uh, the main ideas of the songs, the main like h vocal harmonies and guitar melodies and uh, the basic basic ideas. But it always takes time. It's like uh, you know building a p puzzle, more or less. You know you know the pieces and you know the kind of like the cover when you're buying a puzzle. You know the cover. You know the picture. What it's supposed to look like. You have an idea in your head, but it takes a while to get the right, just everything sounding right. And you know I, I'm pretty happy with the album. I think that um, we succeeded pretty well in what we were looking for. As always, life in general, you know, I was just, uh, I was, um, mm, I had a lot of musical ideas written, but then we worked really heavy from starting last Valentine's, last February, we started working with the band at the rehearsal place, and I was writing constantly at the same time, so it's very current for me. Those are not like old stories. There's stuff that have happened to me within these last couple of months. And I still was writing bits and pieces in the studio as well, which I like because it just makes makes it, um, yeah, it makes it more current. It makes it now as opposed to then. I think that Deep Shadows and Brilliant Highlights was happier. And then Love Metal was more rock. It was more like uh, more raw. I think that they, it's it's always a personal thing. I think that there's a bit more hope in the lyrics, but then again, you know, hope can be w very shattering. You know, the fact that um, I think that it's easier to be depressed and say that everything's lost because then you're not doing anything for anything. But when you're kind of, you know, when you're hanging from a balcony and you know that you can get up, but it's really tough, that's way more tragic, a lot more dramatic. Like the end of Harrison Ford in Blade Runner, when where Rutger Hauer is helping him out. I think that that's more dramatic and a lot more intense than the fact that if he would have just fallen down. Well, there's the thing. Well, there's that track "Dying Song," which starts pretty easy with the guitars and all that, but uh, it's a uh, interpretation of Interpol meeting the Cure during the disintegration era. So. It was cool to have some of the kind of alternative vibes in there as well, you know. And Matt, as a producer, knows a lot about that kind of sound and that sort of soundscape and vibe. So it was uh, it was really cool to work on that, you know, as opposed to just having a producer that be just a rock producer or a pop producer or a he knew a lot about different genres of music. So that made it fascinating and fun.
We're discussing shooting a video for Harkiller now because we're still not sure about what song the first single is going to be like two days ago. And we just had a, had a meeting and it seems that everybody goes with the Heart Killer is going to be the one. And we're hoping, and I've been meeting up with Billy Jukic, a director who did Gun With The Sin for us, who did Join Me In Death for us, the one with the kind of like an ice castle type of a thing. So not the one with the, with the movie 13th Floor stuff in it. And then Bill did one version of Wicked Game for us. He's just a really, really cool guy. And even though we haven't worked together in about 10 years, I've always, we've always been hanging out when in, in Los Angeles. He's based in, in Los Angeles. So, uh, so um, I'm waiting to work with him. And we're at this moment, we're discussing different scripts, different ideas, and seeing it what pe how people you know, react to different kinds of ideas. We're supposed to be shooting it very, very soon, in like two weeks.